Hello everyone, I am Sana and welcome to today's lecture which is about alcohol use disorder. The objectives of today's topic are, first is what are alcohol use disorders, second DSM-5 diagnosis of alcohol use disorder, third causes of alcohol use disorder, fourth neurobiology of alcohol use disorder, fifth consequences of alcohol use Sixth, medical consequences of alcohol use. Seventh, clinical management of alcohol withdrawal syndrome. Eighth, approaches to the treatment of alcohol use disorder. Let's begin with the concept of alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption has become a global issue with various types of alcoholic beverages being consumed all over the world. Ethyl alcohol, also known as absolute alcohol, is the main component of these drinks and is usually diluted for consumption. A standard alcoholic beverage is equal to 10 grams of absolute alcohol. Common alcoholic drinks include beer, wine, whiskey, rum, vodka, gin and brandy as well as locally brewed drinks like arrack and toddy. For many people, drinking alcohol is nothing more than a pleasant way to relax. However, when an individual's drinking habits are considered risky, it can lead to health problems. The various patterns of alcohol consumption include First, social drinking, also known as moderate drinking, refers to someone who regularly drinks alcohol in a variety of social settings with men not having more than two drinks per day while women not having more than one drink per day. Second is binge drinking which is defined as the consumption of alcoholic drinks in a period of about two hours with men consuming five or more alcoholic drinks on a single occasion and women consuming four or more drinks. Third is harmful drinking pattern refers to alcohol consumption pattern that results in physical harm or psychological harm to the individual or society. Fourth, hazardous drinking pattern which refers to a quantity or pattern of alcohol consumption that places individuals at a risk for adverse health events. Fifth is alcohol dependence which is defined as a cluster of behavioral, cognitive and physiological phenomena that develop after repeated alcohol use and that typically include a strong desire to consume alcohol difficulties in controlling its use, persisting in its use despite harmful consequences, a higher priority given to alcohol use than to other activities and obligations, increased tolerance and sometimes a physiological withdrawal state. Alcohol is a major issue globally and in India and is responsible for a multitude of health and socio-economic issues. The World Health Organization estimates that globally an average person over 15 years of age consumes 6.2 liters of pure alcohol annually which equates to 13.5 grams per day. The prevalence of alcohol use disorders in India was 2.6% in 2010 and 2.1% for alcohol dependence. A shocking 33.1% of all road traffic fatalities were attributed to drunk driving in 2012. A study conducted in 2015 and 2016 by the National Mental Health Survey of India found that 9% of adult men had alcohol use disorder. The alcohol attributable fraction of all cause deaths was 5.4%. Additionally, 62.9% of all deaths due to liver cirrhosis were linked to alcohol use. These statistics clearly demonstrate the alarming prevalence of alcohol use in India and its devastating effects on physical health, mental health and public safety. 
in general when people continue to drink alcohol despite negative social health and possibly legal consequences it can be said that their drinking is unhealthy whether it takes the form of frequent or daily alcohol use or binge drinking excessive drinking increase the risk of developing alcohol use disorder previously referred to as alcoholism a chronic brain disease that can go into remission but not cured now let's discuss what alcohol use disorders are Alcohol use disorders include alcohol dependence, alcohol abuse and dependence or harmful use which are widespread and can be very dangerous. People with these conditions often suffer from other medical and mental health issues and can expect to have a shortened lifespan of over 10 years. Unfortunately, most people with alcohol use disorders can be difficult to detect. as they often have jobs and families and present with complaints like fatigue insomnia anxiety depression or various medical issues like many other substance use disorders alcohol use disorder is a chronic and sometimes relapsing condition that reflects changes in the brain This means that when people with the disorder are abstaining from alcohol they are still at increased risk of resuming unhealthy alcohol consumption even if years have passed since their last drink people who have alcohol use disorder may continue to use alcohol even though they know it is causing social health economic and possibly even legal problems in their lives It is important to remember that alcohol use disorder is not due to an individual's lack of self-discipline or resolve. Rather, it is a brain disease that can be inherited. Long-term alcohol use can produce changes in the brain that can cause people to crave alcohol, lose control of their drinking, and require greater quantities of alcohol to achieve its desired effects. It can also cause people to experience withdrawal symptoms if they discontinue alcohol use. Coming to DSM-5 diagnosis of alcohol use disorder. Alcohol use disorder is a problematic pattern of alcohol use leading to clinically significant impairment or distress as manifested by at least two of the following occurring within a 12 month period. Number 1 Alcohol is often taken in large amounts over a longer period than was intended. Number 2, there is a persistent desire or unsuccessful efforts to cut down or control alcohol use. Number 3, a great deal of time is spent in activities necessary to obtain alcohol, use alcohol or recover from its effects. Number 4, craving or a strong desire or urge to use alcohol number 5 recurrent alcohol use resulting in a failure to fulfill major role obligations at work school or home number 6 continued alcohol use despite having persistent or recurrent social or interpersonal problems caused or exacerbated by the effects of alcohol Number 7 important social occupational or recreational activities are given up or reduced because of alcohol use number 8 recurrent alcohol use in situations in which it is physically hazardous number 9 alcohol use is continued despite knowledge of having a persistent or recurrent physical or psychological problem that is likely to have been caused or exacerbated by alcohol number 10 tolerance as defined by either of the following a need for markedly increased amounts of alcohol to achieve intoxication or desired effects a markedly diminished effect with continued use of the same amount of alcohol number 11 withdrawal as manifested by either of the following the characteristic withdrawal syndrome for alcohol alcohol or closely related substance such as benzodiazepine is taken to relieve or avoid withdrawal symptoms now let us discuss the cause of alcohol use disorder 
about 40 to 60 percent of the risk of alcohol use disorders is explained by genes and the rest through gene environment associations. The environment includes the availability of alcohol, attitudes towards drinking and drunkenness, peer pressures, levels of stress and related coping strategies, models of drinking and laws and regulatory frameworks. The reasons for problem drinking can vary from person to person and can be due to a combination of genetic, physiological, psychological and social factors. For instance, some individuals drink due to psychological traits such as impulsiveness, low self-esteem or a need for approval while others may turn to drinking to cope with emotional issues. Additionally, social and environmental factors such as peer pressure and easy access to alcohol can also increase the risk of alcohol dependence. In addition, factors like poverty and physical or sexual abuse can also contribute to the development of alcohol dependence. Genetic predisposition can make people more vulnerable to alcohol dependence and just because someone can hold their liquor does not mean they are immune to alcohol problems. Furthermore, just because a family has a history of alcohol problems, it does not mean that their children will automatically develop the same problems. On the other hand, the absence of family drinking problems does not necessarily protect the children from developing alcohol problems. Furthermore, once people start drinking heavily, this can create a cycle which is hard to break. Heavy drinking can cause physiological changes which make it difficult for a person to stop drinking. People with alcohol dependence may also drink to reduce or avoid withdrawal symptoms. Let us now discuss the risk factors for alcohol use disorder. A number of factors increase the chances that someone will develop an alcohol use disorder. First, family history of alcohol use disorder and other substance use disorders. Second, availability of alcohol. Third, heavy alcohol use. Fourth, binge drinking. Fifth, permissive societal attitudes towards alcohol use. Sixth, history of childhood abuse, seventh, history of conduct or mood disorder in childhood, eighth, having mental health conditions such as depression or post-traumatic stress disorder, ninth, impulsivity. Now, we will talk about the neurobiology of alcohol use disorder. Alcohol use disorder is characterized by an inability to limit alcohol consumption and is associated with modifications in brain regions involved in motivating behavior, controlling stress and emotion such as the midbrain, limbic system, prefrontal cortex and amygdala. Positive and negative reinforcement are both at play in the drinking behavior of individuals. The rewarding effects of alcohol provide positive reinforcement while negative reinforcement occurs when drinking relieves unpleasant emotional and physical states. On the neurotransmitter level, dopamine, opioid peptides, serotonin, GABA and endocannabinoid are primarily responsible for the positive reinforcement effects of alcohol while corticotropin releasing factor and glutamate systems are activated and GABA transmission is suppressed in the case of negative reinforcement. Long term alcohol use causes change in a number of neurotransmitters including GABA, glutamate and norepinephrine. Abruptly stopping drinking leads to an overactive and dysfunctional nervous system which is known as alcohol withdrawal. Glutamate and GABA are two of the most prominent neurotransmitters in the neurochemical mechanisms involved in intoxication tolerance and withdrawal. Let us talk about the consequences of alcohol use, starting with medical consequences of alcohol use. 
when alcohol beverages are ingested, the alcohol is taken in through the stomach and small intestine and spread through the bloodstream to all the parts of the body. The liver absorbs it quickly and the kidneys filter out 95 to 98% of it. Guru Raj determined that as the amount of alcohol consumed nationwide climbs, hospital admission rates for alcohol-related issues are also on the rise, making up 20% to 30% of all admissions. The various medical complications because of alcohol consumption are number 1. Gastrointestinal complications the direct impact of alcohol on the stomach lining can cause acute gastritis, often expressed as vomiting due to overconsumption. Over time, this can cause acidity to increase, leading to peptic ulcer disease. Alcohol is a major contributing factor to hemorrhagic gastritis. Long-term alcohol use is prevalent cause of alcohol liver disease. Number two, cancer. Consuming as little as 1.5 drinks per day can increase a woman's risk of breast cancer by 1.4 times. For both genders, drinking four times daily raises the danger for oral and esophageal cancer by about threefold and rectal cancers by 1.5 times. The greatest risk increase for cancers of the pharynx, oral cavity, esophagus and larynx was attributed to alcohol consumption. Number three, changes in the genitourinary system. Consuming moderate amounts of alcohol can increase sexual drive, but also lessen erectile function in men. Chronic consumption of alcohol, even with no liver damage, can result in irreversible shrinkage of the testicles and seminiferous tubules, leading to a decreased volume of ejaculate and a low sperm count. A disproportionately large connection between alcohol abuse and high-risk sexual behavior and HIV infection has also been found. Number four, muscular changes. Roughly 50 to 67 percent of alcoholics can experience skeletal muscle weakness due to acute alcoholic myopathy, which can be improved with sobriety but not fully remedied. Alcohol consumption can also lead to decreased bone density. Those with chronic alcoholism can suffer from a vascular necrosis of the femoral head and reduced bone density. Number five, neurological complications. The effects of drinking alcohol in the short term, which can be reversed after ceasing alcohol intake, include blackouts, blurred visions, memory loss, and slow reflexes. Peng conducted a study that found that long-term alcohol use can cause alcoholic tremors, myopathy, vernix, encephalopathy, and cerebellar degeneration. Number six, psychiatric complications. Drinking alcohol to deal with depression and anxiousness has become a regular occurrence. At first, it may help ease these conditions, but then it begins to reduce the serotonin in the brain, leading to an increase in depression and anxiety, as well as an increased need to consume more alcohol in order to feel better. This chronic usage can raise the risk of suicide, personality disorders, and risk-taking behavior. 17.6% of psychiatric emergencies at an Indian general hospital were due to alcohol consumption. A case control study of suicides in Bangalore by Guru Raj found that alcohol consumption was a major factor, increasing the risk of suicide by 25 times. Women married to alcohol abusers saw their risk of suicide increase by almost six times. A study by Vijay Kumar in Chennai showed that alcohol users had higher rates of suicide than non-users. Now, coming to social consequences of alcohol use. Drinking alcohol not only affects the person consuming it, but their family members are also affected in some way. 
the individual in a state of intoxication may become violent towards their relatives, deplete their family's financial resources and thus harm their children's educational prospects. Additionally, sons and daughters of alcoholic fathers often have a strained relationship with their family which can have a detrimental effect on their psychological well-being. In a study conducted by Guru Raj in Bangalore, it was found that alcohol users were 2.5 times more likely to emotionally abuse their spouse, 23.3% had physically abused their partner and 7.8% had inflicted physical harm which caused injury. Similarly, in a study by Marco Witz, 20% of women reported being victims of domestic violence with their husband's drinking habits being identified as the primary cause. Let us now discuss the impact of alcohol use on economic and family finances. The results of Bono's research indicated a direct correlation between alcohol and tobacco use and impoverishment due to increased hospitalization expenses. Another study found that people with alcohol dependency spent more than they earned, borrowed money to pay for alcohol and lost an average of 12.2 workdays to their drinking habit with nearly 60% of families reliant on the income of the other family members. Finally, Ramanan's study revealed that half of those who consume alcohol had strained relationships with their families, particularly their spouses and children due to the economic impact of alcohol consumption. Now, talking about road traffic accidents. Alcohol consumption is linked to a wide range of road traffic accidents with both developing and developed countries reporting high rates of such incidents. A study conducted by the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences among 12 major hospitals in Bangalore City found that 28% of injuries from road traffic accidents were due to alcohol use. Furthermore, a roadside survey revealed that up to 40% of drivers were under the influence of alcohol. Additionally, Aditya found that 20% of fatal road traffic accidents were caused by alcohol consumption, with 38% of those individuals having a blood alcohol concentration higher than the legal limit. Guru Raj's study found that 20% of traumatic brain injuries were linked to alcohol abuse. Data released by the National Crime Records Bureau also showed that Tamil Nadu had the highest number of drunk driving accidents in the country. Another study highlighted that high-risk behavior was more common among alcohol-dependent individuals with road traffic accidents being the most frequently observed. Coming to legal problems caused due to alcohol consumption. Legal issues are another major consequence of alcohol abuse. Offenses such as sexual or physical assault, rape, exploitation of women in the sex industry and murder are all related to intoxication. The National Crime Records Bureau of India has classified such alcohol-related crimes under four main laws. The Prohibition Act, Gambling Act, Psychotropic Substance Act and Excise Act. Unfortunately, the majority of these crimes are considered minor and are often disregarded preventing them from receiving the recognition they deserve. Let us talk about another objective of today's lecture, which is clinical management of alcohol withdrawal syndrome. Alcohol withdrawal symptoms may include anxiety, tremors, nausea, insomnia, and in severe cases, seizures and delirium. Although up to 50% of individuals with alcohol use disorder present with some withdrawal symptoms after they stop drinking, only a small percentage requires medical treatment for detoxification and some individuals may be able to reduce their drinking spontaneously. 
Medical management of alcohol withdrawal syndrome can include clinical monitoring and supportive care for hydration and electrolytes as well as thiamine supplementation. For those more severe cases, benzodiazepines are most commonly used medication to reduce withdrawal severity as well as reduce the risk of seizures and delirium. Benzodiazepines act by enhancing the effect of the neurotransmitter GABA at the GABA receptor. Benzodiazepines should be used with caution and close monitoring, especially when combined with alcohol or opioid medications. Adjunct treatment with alpha-2 agonists such as clonidine and beta blockers like atenonol may help to control neuroautonomic manifestations of alcohol withdrawal not fully controlled by benzodiazepines. However, these drugs should be used as monotherapy and should only be used as an adjunctive treatment. An important part of successful alcohol withdrawal treatment is engaging the patient in a program aimed at achieving and maintaining long-term abstinence from alcohol or reductions in drinking. Such a treatment may include pharmacological or psychosocial tools. Coming to the last objective, which is approaches to the treatment of alcohol use disorder. First, let's talk about pharmacological approaches to the treatment of alcohol use disorder. Creating a novel pharmaceutical reagent is a lengthy, costly and expensive procedure. In order to assess its safety, it is usually first tested in a small number of people through phase 0 and phase 1 in clinical trials. Then, efficacy and potential side effects are often further examined in larger phase 2 studies. If the results are satisfactory, bigger phase 3 studies are conducted in multiple facilities with the main focus being on efficacy, effectiveness and safety. If approved for clinical use, post-marketing surveillance phase 4 is used to monitor safety. Currently, only three medications have been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for treating alcohol use disorder. Disulfiram, the first drug to receive FDA approval, was approved in 1951. It restrains acetaldehyde dehydrogenase resulting in the accumulation of acetaldehyde, a very toxic chemical. Basically, when alcohol is consumed with disulfiram, the individual experiences unpleasant symptoms such as tachycardia, headache, nausea, and vomiting. Acamprosate, approved in Europe in 1989, was the next one to be authorized, followed by the opioid receptor antagonist naltrexone in 1994 with a monthly extended release injectable formulation approved 12 years later. Acamprosate is believed to work by modulating hyperactive glutamate states and it is mostly used to help maintain abstinence in already detoxified patients. Naltrexone, on the other hand, reduces cravings for alcohol and has mostly been found to be effective when it comes to reducing heavy drinking. Common side effects of naltrexone include nausea, headache, dizziness, and sleep problems. Although hepatotoxicity has been reported when the drug was administered in high doses at the lower FDA-approved dosage, no severe cases of liver toxicity have been recorded. Now, coming to behavioral or psychological treatments for alcohol use disorder. There is a wide selection of psychological and behavioral treatments that are effective in helping individuals with alcohol use disorder to reduce or abstain from drinking. Treatments with the most evidence of success include brief interventions, operant conditioning, cognitive behavioral treatments, acceptance-based and mindfulness-based interventions, and 12-step facilitation. Furthermore, harm reduction treatments such as controlled drinking interventions have had positive results in supporting reduced drinking goals. 
meta-analysis and systematic reviews have found that brief interventions, especially those based on motivational interviewing principles, are successful in treating alcohol use disorder. These interventions usually involve self-monitoring, recognizing high-risk situations, and training in behavioral and cognitive skills to help the patient cope with drinking situations. Cognitive behavioral treatments can be delivered individually or in a group and can be extended to the treatment of family and couples. Acceptance and mindfulness-based interventions are increasingly being used to target alcohol use disorder and have been proven to be successful in many settings. These interventions include raising present moment awareness, non-judgmental attitude to self and others, and increasing acceptance of present moment experiences. Computerized, web-based, and mobile interventions, which incorporate brief interventions, cognitive and behavioral approaches, and mindfulness, and mutual support group engagement, have also been successful in initial trials. Mutual support groups like Alcoholics Anonymous and SMART have been connected to recovery from alcohol use disorder, but selection biases make it hard to determine if these groups are the main active ingredients for improving outcomes. Behavioral interventions have been as successful as pharmacotherapy options in reducing heavy drinking days in a large-scale trial. The challenge of examining behavioral interventions in randomized trials is that it is hard to implement intervention blinding and placebo controls other than in computerized interventions. Additionally, the common therapeutic factors present in most behavioral interventions such as therapist empathy and supportive therapeutic relationships are as powerful as the specific therapeutic targets of specific behavioral interventions like teaching skills in a cognitive behavioral treatment in helping people make behavioral changes. That brings us to the end of the today's lecture. Thanks for watching.